This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our friends over at the Mason Jar Event Group, who believe in bringing people together and creating community through shared experiences and joyous occasions. Learn more over at masonjareventgroup.com. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Tuesday, March 19th, 2019, and you're tuned in to episode 688 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. We kick off today's news down in the Sunshine State, where over the weekend, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed into law a bill that allows medical marijuana patients to buy and smoke marijuana. This long-running storyline was birthed when Florida lawmakers decided to only allow for medical cannabis in vapable, edible, and other non-smokable modalities after voters overwhelmingly passed a 2016 ballot measure that made no mention of all of a smoking ban. Governor DeSantis called on lawmakers to lift the smoking ban soon after he took office in January. It will take some time to rev up flower production and sales, so even though the bill goes into effect immediately, it will be a little while before Florida patients can expect to reliably find smokable cannabis for sale at their local dispensaries. New Jersey grabs our second headline today with two important state legislative committees both approving bills that would legalize adult-use marijuana. Both the New Jersey State Senate and Assembly saw big legislative moves yesterday as adult use legalization bills were passed out of committee in both chambers and onto the floors of their respective bodies at large. We've been watching New Jersey all year long as newly elected Governor Phil Murphy has worked to smooth out the state level politics necessary to find a compromise adult use legalization plan, which came together last week as we reported on. The new legislation, if enacted as expected, would set a $42 per ounce tax, set up a system to let people get past marijuana charges cleared from their records, and give towns and cities the ability to set their own 3% added sales tax. With our final top story today, we have the Boston Globe's Dan Adams reporting on an interesting lawsuit involving Massachusetts' infamous community host agreements, which are required by hopeful legal marijuana companies to get state license and then must be worked out with the local town or city council. Those community host agreements are by state law to be capped at no more than 3% of revenue and to run no more than five years, but that hasn't stopped most towns and cities from demanding and getting more. In the case highlighted by Dan in the Globe, a county superior court judge just ruled that the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission does not have authority over community host agreements. This is a nuanced and kind of wonky story, but it has big potential consequences for Massachusetts operators, so definitely one to read if you do business there. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out on headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, the Mason Jar Event Group, which believes in bringing people together and creating community through shared experiences and joyous occasions. I had a hugely positive experience myself when I hired the Mason Jar Event Group to help us with our own adventures last year, throwing a party in Las Vegas during the big Marijuana Business Daily Conference, so I can personally attest to their professionalism and top-notch execution and delivery. If you have a legal cannabis event that you need some help with, make sure to open Open up masonjareventgroup.com today and get in touch with Kendall Norris and her team. You'll also find a calendar for the custom events that Kendall and Mason Jar put on for themselves, including next month's Yoga with a View and Cannabis Pairing Brunch and Marketplace in Denver's Space Gallery. One more time, that's masonjareventgroup.com. Thanks to Kendall and everyone over at Mason Jar Event Group for helping support today's news. All right. Time for the Blitz. Yesterday in Pennsylvania, a proposed bill to legalize adult use was sent around to state senators by its two main sponsoring senators. Senate Bill 350 would legalize adult use for people 21 years of age and up and would set up a taxed and regulated sales scheme while also allowing for home grow. Delivery would also be permitted, as would public consumption lounges. Zip over to ABC 27 to read more on this one. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. 
Illinois' state treasurer is pushing state lawmakers to pass a bill allowing medical marijuana businesses to use business banking services. Illinois has had legal medical cannabis since 2013. That's operated, like most states, on a strictly cash basis only. Last week, Health Canada sent out a letter to some of the nation's top medical marijuana producers asking that they better police themselves in terms of how they verify the age of online visitors to their websites. The letter read in part, quote, Health Canada has noted that online promotional content on websites and social media sites is being made available by some license holders without any steps being taken to ensure that the promotion cannot be accessed by a younger person. In other cases, the steps taken, uh, for example, simple self-attestation of age, may be easily circumvented by youth, unquote. Marijuana companies were encouraged to generally tighten up their age verification systems. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, one of the frontrunners to be the 2020 Democratic presidential nominee, seemed to criticize California Senator Kamala Harris, who is also running for president under the Democratic ticket, for joking about the use of marijuana on a radio show last month, which we reported on when it happened. Booker did name Senator Harris outright in his comments made yesterday during an interview with Chris Matthews of Hardball, but it's not hard to pick out who he meant when he said, quote, We have presidential candidates, senators, bragging about their pot use while there are kids who can't get a job because they have a nonviolent offense, unquote. This is notable for how prominent cannabis and, more importantly, cannabis with the right framing, that of social justice, is already showing itself to be on the 2020 presidential campaign trail. Marijuana Business Daily's chart of the week tracks the growth in the number of registered medical marijuana patients in Ohio, along with a comparative view on how expensive medical flower costs for in-state patients. Starting with just over 3,500 registered patients in December, there are now a little under 20,000 registered patients in Ohio. And with the state's cultivation system just getting up and running, prices in Ohio are among the nation's most pricey, tying for most expensive with Pennsylvania's at $480 per ounce. The Associated Press is reporting that a lawsuit has been filed against Pennsylvania State Police over the death of 51-year-old Greg Longnecker, who was killed by police officers driving a bulldozer through the woods, looking for him after a raid on a small 10-plant cannabis patch he was growing on public lands. You might remember this one from last year. Pop over to Leafly for the full read because there are a lot of important details. And finally for today, we have a story in need of some disclosure, as it has to do with one of our sponsors, Cureleaf, a vertically integrated multi-state cannabis operator based in Massachusetts that just paid $70 million in a mix of cash and stock for Nevada-based Acres Cannabis, which will net Cureleaf 269,000 square feet of cultivation space and a large dispensary in Las Vegas. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, the Mason Jar Event Group, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the lesser ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says become a patron i'm your host jay gunther thanks for tuning in starting your day with marijuana today today one take shay one take